Hey guys, it's Mark from Erickson Machine Performance. Today's video, we're going to go through boring a 61X701 cylinder to max bore, which is 84 millimeters. What to look out for, pluses, minuses, and any drawbacks there might be. So, basically, you're using a 760 piston, which is 84 millimeters. Stock Yamaha 701 is 81 millimeter, and we're boring this to size to fit. Luckily, the sleeves can go 4 mil over, but that is at the max. Certain shops don't like doing it. I'm going to explain the reason why. I've had good luck doing it over the years, so, but there's certain things to look out for and know about. So, the one thing is, the bottom of the sleeves, this is a ported cylinder by the way, so it looks a little different. So these sleeves are stepped, so there's a slight step on the lowest portion that goes into the cases, and then the full thickness of the sleeve is in this area. The full thickness of the sleeve in this area is 88 millimeters. I don't know if you can see the sheet. Let's throw it over here. So you want really a minimum of 55 or 60 thousandths thickness of a sleeve for a sleeve to actually be able to support the piston correctly. That's the bare, bare minimum. So you'd prefer more than that. On the very large engines, we go with sleeves, you know, when you're building a 1200cc 62T motor, you need the sleeve to be as thin as possible because when you have a 95mm piston, a good portion of the ports are actually covered up by the piston, so you go for a super small sleeve. The big thing is, you know, if you get an OEM cylinder, odds are the cylinder was bored fairly true no big deal you bore it you check it and you're good to go when you're going to 84 millimeters what you have to check is you have to go around and actually measure the sleeve in all the different areas so this is 105 105 104 96 11. Yeah, all right, so to give you an idea, this cylinder was done not by me, but by a reputable shop. The hole's 10 thousandths off. Not a, it's actually really, really good. A lot of times, depending on who did it and what mach boring machine they did it on, the holes can be all over the place. I've seen holes, you know, 30 thousandths off to one side. And that's where you have a problem when you max bore it. If it's not centered, you're going to have an issue. So before you go to tackle a job like this, one, check the cylinder, see if it is true, you know, within five thousandths. If it's not, bring it to a machine shop. Or if you know how to correct that, you could either correct it with shim stock or you can do the first pass on like a bridge port, true it and then check it and then bore it correctly. I try when I do these to have them within five thousandths all the way around. When you do that, all the issues associated with it go away. The thing to know, you know, the power difference between an 83 millimeter piston and an 84 millimeter piston is minimum. For some reason, no companies make 83 and a half so you end up going from 83 to 84 which also no big deal so if you go that route you bore it to 84 millimeters and something happens you're replacing the sleeves so just know that before you go into it it's an added cost a lot of people go for it anyway have great luck just know you know the sleeves are thinner if you have 
like metal ingestion. I had a customer this year, first time, been doing this for almost 20 years, that a small screw went through his motor. And the screw got snagged on the sleeve. It was a 61X that was bored to 84 millimeters, and it just obliterated the sleeve. It, it cracked the sleeve all the way across. Um, luckily, there was no other damage done. We replaced the sleeve. We were good to go. But it's maxed out. Um, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to show you in a second. I'm going to set it up on the boring machine, start boring it, and go from there. All right, so cylinder's all mounted. We're going to bore it. Um, this cylinder is at 82 millimeters, I believe. Um, no, 81.5. So although this boring bar could take it all in one hit, we're going to machine it in two. So that way, what ends up happening is when the sleeves start to get thin, when you go to cut, they can actually push out. And then while they're cutting, it's just pushing it. And then when it finishes cutting, it goes back in. So you end up with a big taper at the top. So it's a lot better to take two smaller cuts than one big cut when the sleeves start to get thin like this. So we're going to drop the boring bar down. use the cat's paws to center it, center it up, lock the machine down, there we go, back the paws off, and raise the bar back up, Now we're going to set the micrometer. So every boring bar has their own setup procedure, I guess you could say. Quick ways, which is this bar here, uses a micrometer that actually goes in the bar. Um, by doing so, you're actually setting the cutter in the bar, these Van Normans, instead of doing that, you actually set a stationary tool that's got a, a pin in the back that you set and lock down. And that's what actually sets how deep it cuts. So both work really, really well. Let's set up, throw the tool in, tap her home, bring it down. Fire up, let her start cutting. So we finished the first pass, time to take the cutter out. Now what we're going to do is just set this up to the final size. So 
when you're boring a cylinder in general, you bore it to the size of the piston and then you hone out the clearance. So, you know, like on a Wiseco piston, there's, you know, five or a five and a half thousandths clearance on, you know, an engine this size. So you'll bore it to the exact size and then when you go to hone it, you hone the other, you know, five thousandths out of it and end up with the perfect size you want. So honing is kind of one of the overlooked processes that that can really make or break an engine rebuild um, or a por performance engine. The, the surface finish on the bore is what helps the piston ring seal. So the proper way to do it is with multiple stones and multiple grits to get a correct finish that the rings seal quickly. Um, and have very little break in time. It's a longer process, also chamfering the ports correctly, stuff like that. So knowing what you're doing does make a significant difference in performance. Let's get ready to bore the next hole. We're now at the final size. Drop her in. There we go, we're getting close to the end of the bore. There we go. Shut the machine off. Now, off to the honing machine. All right, so we got the cylinder board. Time to go into the honing machine and hone it to size. We start off with a coarse stone and then work our way finer. Um, personally, I use three stones to get the right surface finish and then chamfer the ports and then go af touch it up one last time to take whatever burrs I end up getting from chamfering the ports. So let's get started. Now all I do at first is roughly touch it and that's basically telling us exactly where we're at and how much we have to remove. So right now we're at two and a half thou over. So when you bore the cylinder, you end up with just little ridges. They're, they're really tiny from the cutter going down and around. So when you go and hone it the first time, you knock those ridges off and then you end up knowing what size you're starting at. And then we'll set it from there and go. The way I end up doing it with a core stone, I end up bringing it to, you know, around three thousandths over. This is for forge pistons. So we're going to be going five and a half thousandths clearance. So what I'll end up doing is I'll use the core stone and I'll go to, you know, three, three and a half. I will go to the medium stone, go to four and a half. I'll take it out, chamfer all the ports. Then I'll go back in with a ball hone and just lightly go through it, which this is also chamfering the ports and deburring the ports and then go in with the finishing stone and take the last thousandth off. The other thing you want to do in the last step is after you finish honing, let it cool for a second because you're creating friction by honing it, the cylinder will expand. So by letting it cool for a minute and then measuring it, you're getting an actual measurement. If you take it right out of the machine right after you hone it, 
a lot of times you'll find out, you know, half an hour later that the cylinder's smaller than you actually measured. The other thing when you're honing a cylinder, you're gonna to wanna to check top, bottom, side, and side. Because you can actually hone it tapered on longer cylinders. These are fairly short. You can actually make them into a barrel. So, you know, it's skinny on top, wide in the middle, and skinny at bottom or the opposite where it's fat on the top skinny in the middle fat on the bottom which is probably the worst scenario you could have so let's go back in so now this hone that I have it's a Winona Van Norman hone this is still considered a manual hone because I actually have to stroke it up and down. You don't need a machine this big. There's a couple other things you can end up doing. Listly sells a hone, which is like this. These things you can pick up for around 200 bucks. Comes with the stones. Um, they wear out quickly. They're not quite as good because they have a felt wiper on them. But it'll get the job done. And if you know you're doing it for just you and your buddies, it's more than good enough. The other thing is, you know, technically, if you're careful, you can go up the next size just honing it. It's just going to take a long time because you're removing material slowly. The other thing you can do is, so this is considered a Sun and AN style hone. I use what's called Keyway stones, which are, if you see here, instead of one stone, there's multiple stones on each. What that basically does is when you end up doing larger cylinders that are ported like this one, you know, these single stones, which are the standard stones that everybody normally uses, have a tendency of getting caught and banging in the ports. So using those stones eliminates that issue. They're more money. Um, the other thing you can do for a hone is you could buy a portable AN hone, which is this. Um, I have this on a quick release mandrel. Um, I used this for years and years and years um, on a standard bench. Uh, it was basically just a stand that looked like this that I could rotate it with a circulating pump. Also works great. You can make them pretty cheaply. Um, I've never really found one. Winona makes a small cylinder. Um, porting tank, hone tank that, that works well, but it's fairly expensive. All my fixtures I make myself, I machine them, weld them together, drill tap, so on and so forth. But I've been doing it for so long I know exactly what I want, exactly how I want to do it. So, alright, let's finish this up. pop her out and we're going to chamfer it. All right, so here we go. We're now back on the porting bench to chamfer all the ports. Now, when you're chamfering ports, you don't need to go crazy. You just want to break the edge and round it. I see people go all kinds of, you know, where they're almost 
well, not almost, they actually change the port timing of the motor with how deep they go in. So you're really just going in at a 45 degree angle. Um, I use a cone diamond burr. I recommend using diamond tools or sanding rolls. Diamond tools I find a lot better because carbide burrs actually create a burr in what you're doing, which is the exact opposite of what you're trying to do. Go. Grab one thing real quick. So the other thing you want to do, and this is more for heat. So you want to chamfer the top. You just don't want sharp edges on anything because what gets sharp gets hot. So you can use a normal deburr tool that you can buy that has a blade that you can go around and deburr it. You can use a diamond tool like we're deburring the rest of the cylinder and go around very carefully. Or you can get a cone, which is like this, which is basically sandpaper on a cone. There we go. Using the cone, honestly, you're only going to really do that if you're doing this for a living or you're doing a significant amount of cylinders because that cone and sandpaper is, I don't know, like $150, something ridiculous like that. But it makes life easy. So now we'll go back and champ for the rest. So. Once again, also with that cone, we're going to chant for here and back here. So that way when we set the pistons in, the rings open up quickly and easily. Don't snag on anything. Go. Perfect. If you're looking for one of these cones, they make them both. This is a 45. And then they also make, I think it's 60 degree. There we go. Um, which this one, you know, you more go like that. Awesome tools. Uh, Goodson sells them which is just Goodson.com. Cylinder Head Supply sells them. Uh, a couple companies like that. Good thing to have if you're doing a bunch of them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer around here and then the bottoms of all the ports. And then we will be good to put it back in and finish owning. I also go through whenever I'm doing this and I just touch it with my finger because if I find it far find it sharp to my finger it's going to do damage to a nice shiny aluminum piston. So this stand, this porting stand is from CC Specialties. It's probably the best made cylinder holding stand in the industry and this thing will hold big block Chevy heads LS1 cases cylinders if you've watched my other porting videos you'll see I, I have all kinds of stuff mounted in it All right.
alrighty. Now let's bring it back over to the hone tank and finish her up. All right, let's put her back in fixture. All right, so first thing we're going to do is go in with a ball hone. And all this we're doing is deburring what we just chamfered, basically. There we go. As I said, the only thing that was doing was whatever burr was caused from chamfering the ports were rounding that burr because these balls, let me zoom in a little bit on this. If you see, these are basically little sandpaper balls. So it's called a deglazing hone. That's what these actually are. So they're not really to change the size is just to give a nice surface finish again. Um, the nice thing with two strokes is these balls will go into the ports and chamfer them. Uh, some companies only use these for chamfering ports. I don't really trust that, but I know some guys get away with it. I like to go in with a grinder and do it. It's an added step, uh, but I find you end up with the best finish. So we're at four thousandths on both holes. So now we're going to change the stones. To the next grit down. five all the way around. So now we're going to take the last half of thou off. With the last set of stones. Now the big thing, the main reason um, this style of honing works is you end up with different depth scratches for your hone pattern and by by doing that the rings end up sealing and seating much quicker in general you know where it would normally take you know a certain amount of miles uh, or hours on a two stroke you know pretty much within the first handful of minutes these rings are seated and you're ready to rock and roll we even have some competition engines that we basically, you know, fire them up and run them for five minutes and then go beat the snot out of them. Five, five. Five, five. Five, five. 
five five. All right, I'm going to pop her out, and I'll show some pictures when it's done. There we go. She's all done now. All chamfered, ready to rock and roll. So that's how you bore a 61x cylinder to 84 millimeters. Awesome way to do it. Just know you're on your last bore. So if something happens or it wears out, you're going to end up either re-sleeving it and you know boring it back to 84, or you know that would be a good time to then step up to big bore sleeves. Either way is fine. Just know you know the sleeves end up getting thin. Make sure you know who's doing the work and they're a reputable person, because if it's bored off center, you're going to have all kinds of issues. The sleeves can crack and stuff like that. Um, and other than that, that's it. You know this is set up for Wasner forged pistons, some of the best pistons in the industry. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.